N-T-L-Y-A-S-K-E-D-Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S-A-B-O-U-T-R-U-L-E-1 4-4-A-E-Q-U-I-T-Y-O-F-F-E-R-I-N-G-S These FAQs relate specifically to Rule 144A Equity Offerings. Please refer to our frequently asked questions about Rule 144A generally and our frequently asked questions about initial public offerings for additional information about equity offerings. What is a Rule 144A equity offering? A Rule 144A equity offering is an unregistered offer and sale of equity securities issued by a U.S. or foreign company, the equity securities of which are neither listed on a U.S. securities exchange nor quoted on a U.S. Automated Inter-Dealer Quotation System C. Frequently Asked Questions About Rule 144A What? Securities are eligible for exemption under Rule 144A. Rule 144A under the Securities Act of 1933 As amended the Securities Act provides a non-exclusive safe harbor from the registration requirements of Section 5 of the Securities Act for certain offers and sales of qualifying securities by certain persons other than the issuer of the securities. A Rule 144A Equity Offering is usually structured so that the issuer first sells newly issued securities to an initial purchaser, typically a broker dealer, in a private placement exempt from registration under the Securities Act. The initial purchaser can then take advantage of the Rule 144A safe harbor to reoffer and resell the restricted securities immediately to qualified institutional buyers, QIBs. Rule 144A provides that reoffers and resales in compliance with the rule or not, distributions, and, therefore, the reseller is not an underwriter within the meaning of Section 2, uh, 11 of the Securities Act. A. Reseller that is not the issuer, an underwriter, or a dealer, can rely on the exemption provided by Section 4, uh, 1 of the Securities Act. Resellers that are dealers can rely on the exemption provided by Section 4, uh, 3 of the Securities Act, which securities are eligible for exemption under Rule 144A. Equity securities offered pursuant to Rule 144A when issued must not be fungible, whether substantially identical to a class of securities listed on a national. Securities exchange are quoted in an automated inter dealer quotation system listed securities. Common. Stock is deemed to be of the same class if it is of substantially similar character and the holders enjoy substantially similar rights and privileges. American depository receipts, ADRs, are considered to be of understanding Rule 144A equity offerings. Morrison and Forster LLP 2 The same class as the underlying equity security. Preferred stock is deemed to be of the same class if the terms of the preferred stock relating to dividend rate, liquidation preference, voting rights, convertibility, call, redemption, and other similar material matters are substantially identical, a convertible or exchangeable, security with an effective conversion premium upon issuance at pricing of less than 10% and a warrant with a term of less than three years or an effective exercise premium on issuance at pricing of less than 10% will be treated as the same class as the underlying security. See also frequently asked questions about Rule 144A eligible securities. Source Rule 144A D 3I and SEC release no. 33 minus 6862 April 23rd 1990. Rule 144A D 3I invites a 
Comparison of apparently different types of securities of the same issuer to determine whether in reality they should be considered the same class. J. William Hicks. Resales of Restricted Securities at 7 to 18, West Group 2007. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has stated that privately placed securities that at the time of issuance were fungible with securities trading on a U.S. exchange or quoted on NASDAQ would not be eligible for resale under Rule 144A. In release no. 336,862. April 23, 1990. The SEC stated that the test under Rule 144A to determine whether common stock will be deemed to be of the same class is the same as the test used under Section 12G5 of the Exchange Act of 1934. As amended, the Exchange Act, which section governs the requirement to register a class of securities under the Exchange Act and will be interpreted by the SEC in the same manner. In addition to the foregoing, Rule 144A does not cover resales of securities issued by open-end investment companies, unit investment trusts, and face amount certificate companies that are required to be registered under Section 8 of the Investment Company Act of 1940. Source Rule 144A D 3 E Who may rely on Rule 144A? Issuers are not eligible to rely on Rule 144A for the sale of securities. Rather, in a Rule 144A equity offering, issuers rely on any valid exemption for the offer and sale of unregistered securities when they sell securities to the initial purchasers. Often issuers rely on Section 4, A2, or Regulation D, or Regulation S under the Securities Act, the initial purchasers, or any person or entity other than the issuer, may rely on Rule 144A for the resale of the securities. Generally, the initial purchasers or broker-dealers, affiliates of the issuer may rely on Rule 144A. See Preliminary Note No. 7 to Rule 144A and SEC. Compliance and Disclosure Interpretations Securities Act Rules Question 138.01, January 26, 2009 Available at http colon slash slash www.sec.gov slash division slash corp fine slash guidance slash security s actuals interps dot htm why conduct a rule 144a equity offering privately held companies may find a rule 144a equity offering to be an attractive alternative to an ipo especially if the ipo market is closed the market often Views an equity 144A offering as a stepping stone to an IPO. An issuer can complete a Rule 144A offering while waiting for the IPO window to open. The preparations for a Rule 144A equity offering are substantially similar to those for an IPO, though less involved. Also, N. Issuer that has commenced the IPO process can leverage all of that work and quickly and efficiently use many of the disclosures prepared in connection with an IPO for a Rule 144A equity offering. If the IPO window opens, Morrison and Forster LLP 3. Before or even after the closing of the Rule 144A offering, the work undertaken in connection with the Rule 144A equity offering can easily and effectively be leveraged for the IPO. Other alternative offerings that an issuer may consider while the IPO window is closed are less favorable for the issuer. The ability to resell securities in reliance on Rule 144A enables broker-dealers to structure offerings that closely 
resemble traditional firm commitment public offerings. Once the securities are in the hands of QIBs, a market for the securities may develop among QIBs. These markets do not provide the same liquidity as national securities exchanges, but they provide some liquidity. Nonetheless, the issuer can enhance the liquidity of the securities by including its securities in one of the trading markets for restricted securities. In many Rule 144A equity offerings, the issuer agrees to commence an IPO or to register the offered securities for resale within a fixed period of time. Foreign issuers that do not want to become subject to U.S. reporting requirements may also be interested in Rule 144A equity offerings. In addition to providing yet another capital raising alternative, a Rule 144A equity offering offers other benefits. Issuers in a Rule 144A offering have greater flexibility with respect to disclosure than do issuers in a public offering. Although issuers generally produce offering memoranda that include SEC-style disclosure, the contents of the offering memoranda are dictated by industry practice, not SEC regulation. Issuers are not required to comply with the regulations that prescribe the disclosure requirements for the registration statements used in public offerings. Further, there is no SEC review of the offering memorandum, thus eliminating the delay associated with SEC review until the issuer becomes an SEC reporting company. It is not subject to the corporate governance provisions of the federal securities laws and the national securities exchanges, nor is it exposed to the liabilities arising from these provisions, particularly those set forth in the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. C. What are the disclosure requirements for Rule 144A equity offerings? Finally, many Rule 144A offerings are structured as global offerings with a side-by-side -side offering targeted at foreign holders in reliance on Regulation S. This dual structure permits an issuer, especially a foreign issuer, to broaden its potential pool of investors. A foreign issuer may take advantage of this structure to attract investors from its home country that are already familiar with the issuer. What are the advantages of undertaking a Rule 144A equity offering? In addition to the potential efficiencies that may be realized by a private company that completes a Rule 144A equity offering prior to completing an IPO. The advantages of a Rule 144A offering include 1. No. Public disclosure of innovative structures or sensitive information 2. Limited or no FINRA filing requirements and three, reduced liability under the Securities Act. C. Why conduct a Rule 144 equity offering? What are the disadvantages of conducting a Rule 144A equity offering? Rule 144A offerings are limited to QIBs, which limits the universe of potential purchasers. Following the completion of the offering, there will not be an immediate liquid secondary market for the offered securities c frequently asked questions about rule 144a are securities resold under rule 144a freely morrison and forster llp4 tradable after such resale investors may demand a liquidity discount for the offered securities a Rule 144A offering may allow a private company to raise capital from institutional investors and become better known. However, it is unlikely to result in any research analyst following. The company will defer becoming subject to SEC reporting requirements, but Rule 144A issuers are required to provide purchasers 
at their request with reasonably current information. C. What are the disclosure requirements for Rule 144A Equity? Offerings. A non-reporting issuer that conducts a Rule 144A. Equity offering also must monitor the number of its equity holders to ensure that it does not inadvertently become subject to SEC reporting requirements by crossing the holder of record threshold. It does not matter how the equity holder acquired its interests in the issuer. Accordingly, an issuer may limit an offering to a small number of initial purchasers for purposes of avoiding the reporting rules but eventually become subject to the reporting requirements if ownership of its securities becomes more dispersed. The number of holders can be monitored relatively easily by a transfer agent or through the facilities of a private secondary trading market. As discussed above, equity securities offered under Rule 144E must not be fungible with or substantially identical to listed securities. Accordingly, it is not likely that an issuer will be able to complete multiple Rule 144A equity offerings. What are the principal steps for a Rule 144A equity offering? An issuer first sells restricted securities to one or more initial purchasers in a private placement exempt from registration generally under Section 4, a 2, and or Regulation D or Regulation S of the Securities Act. The initial purchasers will be broker-dealers. The broker-dealers reoffer and resell the securities to QIBs in reliance on the Rule 144E Resale Safe Harbor. What are the disclosure requirements for Rule 144A? Equity offerings. There are no regulations prescribing the disclosure requirements for a Rule 144A offering. Most practitioners advise their clients to prepare an offering memorandum that contains substantially the same issuer type of information that an issuer would be required to include in a registration statement. Moreover, if the issuer is preparing for a future IPO, it will need to prepare audited financial statements. However, it is important to note that market practice aside, the issuer will have significant flexibility regarding the presentation of information in the offering memorandum. For example, the issuer may choose to present summary or selected information for fewer years or may include limited executive compensation information in the offering memorandum. Once an issuer has commenced the Rule 144A offering process, Rule 144A requires that issuers provide purchasers at their request with reasonably current information about the issuer unless the issuer is I, not a reporting company under the Exchange Act E, a foreign issuer exempt from reporting pursuant to Rule 12 grams 3 to 2b of the Exchange Act or e a foreign government. Such information includes the following. A brief description of the issuer's business, products, and services. Morrison and Forster LLP 5. The issuer's most recent balance sheet, profit, and loss statement, and retained earnings statement, and any similar financial statements for such part of the two preceding fiscal years as the issuer has been in operation, the financial statements must be audited if audited statements are reasonably available with respect to a foreign private issuer as defined under the U.S. federal securities laws. Information will be presumed reasonably current if the information meets the timing requirements of the issuer's home, country or principal trading market. The obligation to provide information to purchasers continues so long as the issuer is neither a reporting company nor a foreign issuer providing home country information. 
who was involved in a Rule 144A equity offering. The participants in a Rule 144A equity offering include many of the same players as would be involved in an IPO. Retaining the proper external advisors is important for a successful offering. The offering team will include one or more initial purchasers. The initial purchasers may be the same broker dealers that would serve as underwriters in an IPO by the same issuer. If there are multiple initial purchasers, one may serve as the lead and the others may play the same role as co-managers of an IPO. Also involved, although technically not required, is an independent auditing firm with significant public company experience and outside legal counsel. Financial printers are not required but should be considered. Depending on the size of the offering, a transfer agent is not required. Assuming the issuer is not yet public, but the issuer should be ready to engage a transfer agent by the time any registration statement is filed if contemplated. An issuer may also want to hire an investor relations firm. An issuer should also have an internal offering team in place. Key members of the internal team should include the issuer's president, CEO, CFO, general, counsel, controller, and an investor relations or public relations manager. Depending on the issuer's industry, other team members may be essential. For example, a life sciences company may want its chief research officer or chief medical officer on the internal team. How does a reseller establish a reasonable belief that a person is a QIB, the reseller and any person acting on the resellers? The half may rely on the following non-exclusive methods to establish a prospective purchasers, ownership and discretionary investments in securities, the purchasers most recent publicly available annual financial statements, provided that such statements present the information as of a date within 16 months preceding the date of the sale of securities under Rule 144A to a U.S. purchaser or within 18 months for a foreign purchaser. The most recent publicly available information filed by the prospective purchaser with at the SEC, another U.S. federal, state, or local governmental agency, or a self-regulatory organization, or be a foreign governmental agency or foreign self-regulatory organization provided that such statements present the rule 144a equity offering team morrison and forster llp6 information is of a date within 16 months preceding the date of the sale of securities under rule 144a to a u.s purchaser or within 18 months for a foreign purchaser the most recent publicly available information appearing in a recognized securities manual, such as Moody's or Standard & Poor's, provided that such statements present the information as of a date within 16 months, preceding the date of the sale of securities, under Rule 144A to a U.S. purchaser, or within 18 months for a foreign purchaser, or a certification by the purchaser's chief financial officer, a person fulfilling an equivalent function or other executive officer, specifying the amount of securities owned and invested on a discretionary basis by the purchaser as of a specific date on or since the end of the purchaser's most recent fiscal year, or in the case of a purchaser that is a member of a family of investment companies, a certification by an executive officer of the investment advisor specifying the amount of securities owned by the family of investment companies as of a specific date on or since the end of the purchaser's most recent fiscal year. The basis for reliance enumerated in Rule 144 AR non-exclusive 
resellers may be able to establish a reasonable belief of eligibility based on factors other than those cited. A reseller cannot rely on certifications that it knows or is reckless in not knowing or false. However, a seller has no duty of verification. In other words, unless the circumstances give a reseller reason to question the veracity of the information, the reseller does not have a duty to verify the information. Source Rule 144AD, 1IIV, and SEC Release. 33 minus 6862, April 23rd. Well, I hope you guys enjoy, as always, to be continued. You need to go ahead and Google for more information. Once again, I'm just a guidepost guiding you guys to my resources. Hope you enjoy. Bye.